टूडे आई केम टू यू विद अ मैसेज ऑफ होप 587 BC before the birth of Isa alay salam there was one incident happened Babylonians attacked Jerusalem almost 600000 Jews were killed and 600000 Jews were captured and taken away from Jerusalem Jews they lost the original book of torah and all the belongings of hazrat musa alay salam after that incident 150 years passed and torah was written again just by memory there was no original script present when they were writing this torah after 150 years the major mistake happened in the history of religion in this world in that copy of torah there was no mention that when adam alay salam did the sin mistake error and he asked allah subhanahu wa taala about the forgiveness that story was missing from the torah that's why jews they believed and after jews christian up to this day they believe that every newborn baby is born born as a sinner and because of that defect because of that error then later on they came up with this theory that god because of the sin of humanity god out of his mercy sent down his son to sacrifice on behalf of human being one error after another error but look at the beautiful story of islam islam says that even if you do a sin sin does not make any permanent defect in your ikhlaq after every sin you have room to improve and that's why allah subhanahu wa taala himself taught adam alayhi salam how to ask for forgiveness rabbana zalamna anfusana illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin allah subhanahu wa taala taught adam alayhi salam make dua supplicate to allah subhanahu wa taala and allah will forgive you let me give you a little background of that incident of hazrat adam alayhi salam and then we can reflect on that incident you know adam alayhi salam he and his wife hawa alayhi salam they were the only two in jannah at that time and allah subhanahu wa taala didn't ask them much allah told them you can eat you can do whatever you like there was no sharia there was no other restrictions on them only one restriction and that restriction was don't go close to that tree only one restriction but allah subhanahu wa taala wanted to teach us a lesson through that story one restriction but still adam alay salam failed to fulfill that commitment with allah subhanahu wa taala that shows as a human being this is in our very body in our structure ingredient that we will do mistakes we will do mistakes that's why the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if you will not do mistakes if you will not sin allah will replace you with the nation they will come and they will do mistakes and they will ask allah subhanahu wa taala for forgiveness so islam has a message of hope this is the only religion in which there is no wasila required in christianity and other religions you need a middle person to communicate between you and allah subhanahu wa taala but in this religion allah subhanahu wa taala says that if they call on me i am ready to answer their call you don't need a middle person 
and you don't need any specific place or condition to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can ask anywhere even if you don't have a wudu you can raise your hands and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness my brothers and my sisters and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the ayah I read in front of you he is ready in Allah yaghfiru zunuba jamia Allah is ready to forgive no matter how many sins you have my respected brothers and my sisters we are in the last part of Ramadan when we read Quran in Quran you will see again and again every page is full of message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah does not give up Allah never gives up on his creation Allah is trying to communicate you and me in a different way on every page Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to bring us towards him showing us the light in different ways that Allah's different way of showing us the light tells us my brothers and my sister we as a human being we should not give up on each other anytime we should always have we should always have hope we should never give up there is always a room that I can go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my you see you know hopelessness is from Iblis it's a work of Iblis that's why Iblis is from Mubalis Mubalis means hopeless so somebody who loses hope in him or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually he is becoming friend of shaitan friend of Iblis because this is the name of Iblis Iblis Mubalis that's why the message of Quran is as a Muslim we never lose hope we always see light at the tunnel at the end of the tunnel that no matter how bad sinner I am no matter I am you know drowned in sins but there is always a room for me to make Tawba repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tawba is going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with conviction with conviction that Ya Allah I will not go back to that sin again but as a human being Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says that if you do the same sin again then go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is ready to forgive you again the only condition is go back with sincere heart with conviction that you will not do that sin again but as a human being out of weakness if you do the sin again never lose hope go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi says this blessing of Tawbah can make us experience Jannah in this dunya if we sincerely repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can feel the breeze of Jannah breeze of Jannah in this dunya through Toba, my brothers and my sister and this is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know Ramadan the hadith which I, we have heard all of our life but in these days some people they say it's a zaif hadith but I will still quote that hadith because that hadith has a great message when it is said that the first ashra of Ramadan is Rahma the second ashra of Ramadan is Maghfira and third ashra of Ramadan is forgiveness protection from the fire of hellfire let me explain some of the scholars they have reflected on this hadith they say for some Muslims from the very first day of Ramadan it's a Rahma it becomes month of Rahma for them they are ready for it from the very first day but there are some Muslims they have little struggle they are not quite ready for it the second Ashra comes and now they are ready they are ready to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are ready to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for them the second Ashra becomes the Ashra of Maghfira but there are still even weaker Muslims they are not even quite ready when the second ashra is ending when the third ashra comes now every Muslim is ready 
to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, repentance. He is ready to go to the station that he can call upon his Rabb and he is ready to make tawbah. He is ready to reconcile with his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why the third ashra is the protection from hellfire. The message is Ramadan does not want to leave anybody behind. Ramadan wants every Muslim to get the forgiveness. Ramadan wants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants his mercy to be given, to be showered on everybody who says Kalma la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. I firmly believe that in last days of Ramadan, every Muslim is at the best station of his Iman. Every Muslim, his Iman, his spirit is well connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And wallahi, this is the time. This is the time that we should take advantage of our station of Iman so that we can seek the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can get forgiveness. That's why the ayah I read in front of you in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us hope قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Tell my Abd, if they wrong themselves, if they make mistake, if they, they, they do sin, never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفُرُ ذُنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Because Allah is ready to forgive all of your sins. And then, innahu huwal ghafoor rahim My brothers and my sisters, take advantage of these last days. Inshallah, in our Khatmah Quran program, I will do a little bit more reflection about dua. Remember one thing, when you want to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some scholars, they say, first, you should do shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when we ask something, there is a shaiba. That when you are asking something, you may be complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about that particular thing you are missing in your life. If I am asking for this dunya, then there is a shaiba, there is a doubt when I raise my hand that I am complaining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have not given me this dunya. The scholar they say, then you start your dua with Alhamdulillah. You do thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Ya Allah, whatever bounties, nema you have given me, I am shakir to you. I am thankful to you. And the second, we should, second thing we should do, to do durood on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Acknowledging the best nema that you can give to any soul on this planet is the nema of Iman. And I want to say, Ya Allah, I want to send durood on the Prophet, the Messenger, because of whom? We are Muslim because of him we got the message of this Tawheed and Iman. So in the beginning of my dua, I want to say thanks to you, Alhamdulillah. And I want to send durood to my Mohsin, my Murshid, my leader, my mentor, my resource because of whom I happen to be a Muslim. And then you make your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, couple of best duas that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has taught us. The very famous dua, Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbul afwa faafu anni. There is another dua which I will share with you, my brothers and my sisters, in which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Ask Allahumma jalli inda ka walija wa jalli inda ka zulfa wa husna maab." What a beautiful dua! Dua is, Ya Allah, make me walija. Walija is somebody who goes in somebody's house very frequently and freely, without any hesitation. Kisi ke ghar ke andar, kisi ka aana jana ho. And he goes so frequently, he becomes safekeeper. He becomes razda of that person. Prophet is saying, Ya Allah, make me walija. So I visit your house. I visit your door, I knock your rahma as frequently like anybody goes in anybody's house in and out. So I become really truly your friend and rasda. 
And then Allah Prophet say, say, Vajali in the Gazulfa. Zulfa, Zulf. Urdu me get then Zulf. Make me closer to yourself. Make bring me closer to yourself. Wahusna Maab. And make my ending the best of the ending. Wallahi, this dua, inshallah, I have made copy, copies in Khatme Quran. I will provide everybody these two duas. What a beautiful dua. In first dua, Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbu lafwa faafu anni. Here, Prophet Sallallahu did not say, Allahumma inna ka ghafoor. Because ghafoor means to protect, to cover my mistakes. Covering mistakes does not mean that mistakes are forgiven. Covering mistakes does not mean you will not be accountable on that day. But afuun means not only forgive me, but clean my slate. Like there was no sin, there is no ink left, there is no mark left. So wallahi, these two beautiful duas that we should take advantage, my brothers and my sister, of last days of Ramadan, when our Imam is in the best condition, when we are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our soul, our spirit is uplifted. You all have worked so hard all Ramadan. Everybody in their capacity, whatever time and energy they had, Wallahi, every day, end of the day, we all feel exhausted. And that exhaustion in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sign that I have gone back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though I am tired, but I am standing in front of my Rabb so that I can uplift my, my soul, I can uplift my ruh, and I can connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's take advantage, my brothers and my sisters, of last days of Ramadan, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives you me tawfiq because when we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves so much. You might have heard that story of camel when somebody in the middle of desert, he has all his belongings on that camel. His life line was on that camel, his water, his food, middle of the desert. And he loses that camel. And he loses hope of life. And when he doesn't find his camel, he exhausted, tired. He is taking a little nap, thinking that he is going to die. Because there is no hope, there is no life, you know, around. When he loses hope, and he takes a little break and nap, when his eyes open, he sees his camel back in front of him. Prophet Muhammad says, when he sees camel, that means he is seeing his life back. And out of joy, he gets so happy, he says, Ya Allah, I am your master and you are my slave. Ya Allah, I am your master and you are my slave. So he says, other way around, out of joy, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam says, If Abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is more happy then that traveler who lost his camel and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes it, appreciates it and values it. So let's go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters, take advantage of these days. Allah.